Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Happy Art at Home or in the Hoboken Public Library. Thank you to the Hoboken Public Library for sponsoring these wonderful classes where we get to express ourselves in the comfort of our home studio or here in the beautiful renovated uh, library studio here in wonderful downtown Hoboken. I just can't express enough gratitude to the Hoboken Library for allowing us to do this. And Margot has said in the chat, hello to everyone. Hello, shout out to you, Margot, at home. And we are now being live streamed. All right, so we're continuing with our December theme of art as a gift or artists who create gifts or artists who have a gift. But the real funny haha -ha for today's session is I've chosen an artist who is, I think, even for me, someone who's looked at art for, gosh, almost 70 years and tried to figure it out and understand it this gentleman is really hard to get. So I am looking forward to comments from folks at home and here about how they perceive his art, what your impressions of his work are, and what you think. Is it art? Is this guy legitimate? Is he, my new least favorite word, authentic? Or, you know, what's going on with his work? So I'm going to do a brief um, overview of his biography while sharing the screen with everyone with an image of his really kind of philosophically deep work. very pixelated, I'm sorry to say. Folks at home, can I have a thumbs up if you can see it? Robin is the only one on camera and she's... Yes. Okay, good. All right, so our artist for today is a guy named Rudolf Stingel. I'll put it in the chat momentarily. Rudolf Stingel is based in New York City but he was born in Murano, Italy. His work brings in the audience in dialogue about their perception of art. And he uses conceptual painting, which you should excuse me, whatever that means, and installations to explore the process of creation. So he makes these installations that are more about the process of making art than they are about the end product of what he makes, which to me is very, very interesting. What is more important? What we're looking at or how the artist made it what was the artist thinking about when he made it? What was the first idea that entered the artist's mind while creating the art? I think the artistic process is very similar to the scientific process. You have a problem. You create a hypothesis. This is the way I think I'm going to solve the problem. You make a method. These are the steps that I'm going to use in order to solve my problem. You go about doing the work. And art is experimental, just like science. And then you have an outcome. And the outcome is either what you expected from your hypothesis, or it's not. And if it doesn't come out the way you want it to, you redesign your method. 
Same thing in both science and art. So in a way, conceptual art is almost a science of art. And this is the kind of work that Mr. Stingle does. He likes using found materials, styrofoam. How much do we hate styrofoam? It's so bad for the earth and the environment. So I'm grateful to him for using stuff that we normally throw away. He also uses carpet and cast polyurethane, not so great for the environment. And he makes art based on these underlying ideas and concepts as the framework for the finished product. He likes to challenge contemporary ideas of what art is. This is so cool to me. The surface of his two-dimensional flat work is often carved or gouged out, scratched on or altered, imprinted or indented in some way. He lives in New York and Murano, Italy, both. He first became noticed in the late 1980s with monochromatic works. That means he likes making pieces that are usually only one color. So his early works are usually silvery colors. Sometimes there are undertones of red, yellow, or blue. They're all abstract. Sometimes he uses oils and he likes to spray, drip, press, and pull these colors across a black field. So that means he paints the canvas first in black and then he pulls or scrapes or sprays the paint across the black. The works begin with an application of a thick layer of paint in a particular color. And then he likes to put gauze on top of that and spray or paint over the gauze to make this wonderful textured surface. The gauze is removed and it does make a richly textured top. All right. He sometimes uses enamel paint. He sometimes uses tulle, which is another very finely meshed fabric. Netting, like gauze. And here's a cool thing about his newer work. He likes to invite people in to make marks on his pieces so that he gives up ownership and authorship of his own work. So he will frequently have an installation at which there is paint or markers or some other kind of media where people can come in and leave a mark on whatever it is he's created, whether it's a painting or an installation or a wall that he's been working on. Um, he's been in many uh, biennales and biennials. In 1993, he exhibited a, exhibited a huge plush orange carpet glued to the wall at the Venice Biennale. In his site-specific Plan B in 2004, he covered the entire floors of Grand Central Terminal's Vanderbilt Hall and the Walker Art Center with an industrially printed pink and blue floral carpet. Similarly, simultaneously in Frankfurt, um, Maine, Stingle completely resurfaced one of the rooms of the Museum for Modern Kunst, walls, columns, and floor with bright red and silver insulation panels 
printed with a traditional damask wallpaper motif. During the 2013 Venice Biennale, he covered the Palazzo Grazzi with his own Persian inspired carpeting on which he hung his abstract and photorealist paintings. In other installations, he covered the walls with silver metallic celotics, insulation board, and invited visitors to mark them as they wished, and so on and so forth. In 2007, at the Whitney Museum of American Art, the artist covered the gallery walls again with the Celotex insulation board and invited visitors to draw, write, and make imprints on the surface of the softly reflected silver paneling, effectively removing the artistic privilege from the mark of the individual and handing it over to the collective gestures of thousands of viewers. So he wants audience participation in his work. He wants to give up ownership of his own work. Interesting, right? So I believe this painting that we're looking at now is one of his earlier works. It's one of the silvery things on which he's laid first the black ground, the black background, and then put down gauze that he spray painted silver on top and then scraped and gouged through it. Apparently lately, he has been um, putting styrofoam sheets on the floor of his studio and putting on boots that he soaks in, um, forget what chemical, lacquer thinner. And he walks across the thick styrofoam and the lacquer thinner eats into the styrofoam and leaves marks. And that's his latest work. So this kind of gouging and scratching and leaving impressions in the surface of his paintings and installations is a big deal for him. He also does, I should mention, he does these photorealist paintings. So he's also a realist. He likes doing portraits. We will be having our model Elizabeth uh, later. And I had hoped that we could all do a warm up session with her and then start doing our more abstract work. Or give, I was gonna give you the choice of working from life and or doing abstracts today. I'm gonna be doing a demonstration of different techniques you can do a la Stingle. And before we look at more images, I'm gonna put our artist's name in the chat box, Rudolf Stingle. I don't know, those of you who are here, can you read that tiny print? Let me, in, I'm gonna enlarge this briefly. Folks at home, you're gonna lose the picture. Better, folks here, Rudolph, like the reindeer, Stingle. Right, which, Eileen, that's the German spelling, correct? No. Stingle, S-T-I-N-G-E-L. I'm gonna close that, and we're gonna look at some more pictures. Any thoughts or feelings about that first image that we showed? Likes, dislikes? I liked it a lot. Susan, why? It reminded me of the cage uh, carving a little bit. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I, I love the color silver. I don't, folks at home, I don't know if you can hear, but Susan was saying that she liked that first image because it reminded her of cave art that we have looked at. I don't know if we've looked at it in this class, but at the senior center, we've looked at cave drawings. Yeah, it looks like slate almost, you know. Yeah, it did. Yeah, like it so this is one of his newer, more contemporary pieces. You can see that people have walked through and left their mark 
on his work. People have carved in their names. I think this is a piece of that insulation stuff. Definitely highly textured surface. Very scratched up. I love the golden color of it. He likes metallic. Yeah, this is the metallic Cellotex insulation board. I wonder if he provides masks for people to wear because it can't be good for you to breathe. And he comments on this baby. Looks to you like a map of the, you know, a map of the United States with all the right, little. Um, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. That's cool. Eileen and Heather are seeing a map configuration here. A topographic map, oh, like, <laughs> like one we would have made in the fifth grade. With elegance about them too. Okay. It's a delicacy, even you know, even those gods and you know, cars. There's, there's something kind of elegant for me. Maybe this shiny metallic quality, Lily. But I wonder how different it is to see that. In person, like if it has a rough edge or a smooth edge. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like it right would now, be interesting. I have never yeah. seen his work in person. He's somebody I'd never heard of before. He must be from northern Italy, right? Uh, I don't know where Marino, Italy is. M E R O N A, Marina. Moret, Morona, M E R O N. Oh no, Murano, M E R A N O, Italy. So, no, that's Murano. That's in Venice. So it is northern Italy. Whoever gets that, Murano is an island in Venice. That's where they make the glass. This is giving me kind of an ancient Egyptian feeling too, like something we might run across in a pyramid. Maybe again, because of the gold. Top of a what? A desk? Yeah, that's been used and scratched and the top of the desk said Jennifer. Yeah, especially with the name yeah, yeah, kids carving their names into the desk. I love the fact that he invites people in to leave their mark on his work. I think maybe he's going to change the shape and future of art. Who knows? Okay, here's one of his carpet installations. I'm not sure I get these. Help. I want to hear thoughts on these works. So this was at the Venice, or no, at the Whitney. Covered the entire room. It almost changes the um, intent Okay, Heather's saying it changes the intent of the space in which it's displayed for sure. And I like how it makes, what is the ceiling? What are the walls? What is the floor? It really upends the whole logic of the space. What's that thing on the right? This is one of his paintings that he's installed on top of the carpet, which is something that he does. So you can really see 
that the process, the making, the thinking about what he's doing is way more important than the finished product. Because how do you sell something like this? You you could sell it to a museum, probably, but you could sell it to an incredibly wealthy person who probably would store it somewhere in order to loan it to a museum. That's what I don't know. So a lot of conceptual artists don't sell the actual piece. You're right, Heather. They're one-shot installations, and then they are taken down and removed. The artist makes more from photographs of the installation or drawings of the installation than they do from the actual finished work of art. It kind of reminds me, although different, Frisco, you know, Frisco would be out in the environment, but these are interior. Right. right. And for those of you who may not remember who Christo was, if you had the opportunity to go to the gates in Central Park, how many years ago was that? Christo was another conceptual artist dealing with the whole concept of space and architecture. And um, the gates were these orange cloth curtains, curtains, thank you, that were placed throughout Central Park. It, they were beautiful. And Christo made his money from photographs of his installations, not from the installation itself. And boy, were they wealth, wealthy, the Christos. They did very well. All right, we'll look at a couple more of these. And then I'm going to do a demonstration. And if Elizabeth doesn't show up, that's, I mean, I'm concerned for her. But um, we just won't do live drawing today. We'll pop right into doing abstraction. Oh, and here I'm guessing. Nope. So this is one of his earlier works. He put the black down first, I believe, but it looks like he added more black in the final stages. This one really looks to me like it could be a map, an aerial view of a street map. Like they're huge they're huge yeah they're huge i don't have dimensions for you but his work is really big i'm shrinking it because it's very pixelated but texture seems to be his motivating force color texture And those are keywords and ideas for us to think about in our own work today, color and texture. Hmm. This one, I'm keeping my mouth shut. What do you guys think? All right, I'm hearing a lot of positives here. I love it. Robin is clapping her hands at home. Robin, why do you like this one? I love the color, the texture, and it just pulls me in. Um, it looks like it's almost, um, what do you call it, finger painting? Like, you know, somehow hands were involved with making these textures. I don't know, but it it's just compelling on all levels and very it's pleasing it's um right color texture shape everything i don't know what it is i mean i'm not trying to make anything of it i just let it in and it it feels good 
Nice, nice comments. Anybody else? <gasps> yes, it does. Is this where you're seeing the wing? Heather is seeing a bird flying through. And here's the head. Oh, no, no, that's, that's the center. center. That's yeah, right there. That's the head. Oh, okay. Yeah. The other side is better. Here. No, the other side. The to the right, side. to the right, to the right. That whole. Oh, I see here. Oh, I see. Yes. Oh gosh, I didn't see that at all before. How interesting is that? So Heather and a lot of folks here are seeing a bird. I see the map here. I see the aerial map. And Jennifer <laughs> sees the map. And I see like a lot of depth. A lot of depth. It does recede back into space. And for me, this one is the most relatable and easy to understand. It feels like a landscape to me. Yeah. Like this could be a mountain. This could be the horizon line here for me could be here. And this is the foreground and this is the background. And the color is gorgeous, just gorgeous. All right. So, gosh, I'm thinking um, we'll pick up with Elizabeth when she does get here. But what I'd like to do now for everyone, let's look, we're going to look at one more monochromatic and then I'm going to do our demo. Oh, this one is very different from his other work. So let's look at this first. And I don't know if this one is an earlier or later. I think this is the later one where he's invited people to come in and write notes and stick things on. This is the Celotex insulation wall. Looks like people are putting their old bills and stuff <laughs> or he's putting So this is more a collage, which we are not gonna do today. Although people at home, if you opt to do collage, that's cool too. But folks here, I didn't bring in materials for collage. All right, so if there's no further comment on Mr. Stengel, did I say he was born in 1956 and he is still living and doing well? All right, so we're gonna stop the share and Laura is gonna set up the camera and I'm gonna do a demonstration. Those of you at home and those of you who are here waiting for that to happen. At home, you want to gather up bits and pieces of old cardboard boxes. I don't know if you have sticks laying around. Um, what else? I'm drawing a blank. Bits and pieces of styrofoam from packaging. Bubble wrap is kind of cool to use for what we're going to do today. Plastic utensils, that kind of thing. So gather up your stuff. You're going to need paper to do your work on as your surface. And those of you who are here, the materials that you need are all along the back counter. Um, if you didn't bring your own stuff, as I mentioned, you could do in the email that I sent out. Just take a few little pieces of junk. We can always swap and share. Don't take a truckload of the detritus. Oh, and, and the tree, tree. Oh, I forgot. Thank you, Lily, for reminding me. Lily. Sorry, folks at home, you can have snacks on your own though. You got your whole refrigerator. <laughs> Lily has very sweetly, not to make a pun, brought in cupcakes. Oh, and they, oh, and she even put them on plates. They, they were, they're like Orlando. So they just needed to share. Help yourselves. You can either take some with you. She brought plastic bags, baggies for you to cart them home in, or you can take some to eat now. All right, so let's gather up our stuff. In another couple of minutes, I'm going to do a demonstration of how we can 
create abstraction using garbage. That is our goal today. We're going to make abstraction using garbage. Susie, you're going to go to the back. See where Heather is? Ladies, it's a black shirt. You're going to pick out some garbage. Heather, don't pick all the stuff. Not too much, too. Okay. 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 Okay, guys, you have 30 seconds left. <laughs> Yeah, right. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. 
very fine band. <laughs> yeah, he's feeling strong. Good. Yeah. Okay, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That was a strong, but she's probably. <laughs> So the word I want you to remember that I used in the lecture, people at home, can you hear me? Oh, check the chat. Can you hear me, Robin? Okay. Yes. Okay, good. The word I want you to remember is monochromatic. We are only going to use white and black today. And Sally and Susie, if you cannot see, you move your chair over to this side or watch the TV. Okay. Mr. Stingle only used monochromatic colors. And that's what I want us to try and do today. No paint brushes. I deliberately did not bring brushes. Lily's eyes are like, what? <laughs> we are going to create art images with garbage. The first step you are going to take is to put paint in the paper plates that I brought. You can do one for black and one for white. You can get astounding <coughs> different tints and hues with just these two colors. And you'll find that as you work, they're going to mix automatically. It's going to be impossible to keep the colors separate. And for the first piece of paper that you're going to use, I want you to play, go wild, experiment, have fun. Check out the possibilities. Explore what the tools and the media can do for you on paper. Do not try and create an image. Just play. All right. Eileen is like, woohoo, this is my thing. <laughs> Black of wood. What can I? possibly do with a piece of wood. Well, let's see. I dip wood right into the paint. I'm going to apply it to the paper in a variety of ways. Right now, I'm smushing it. What if I were to scratch with the corner? Nice. I can take another surface on the block, dip it in the black. I can stamp. I can literally print. So there are a variety of ways that you can actually use sound materials to make fabulous texture on a flat two-dimensional surface. Double wrap. Love yeah. it. Susie's like, what can we do with this? Watch. You can stamp with it. You can drag it. <laughs> Swipe the fidget. There's an old CD. What can I do with this? I can roll.
Bite down. Scrape. Make a blob. All right. Get the idea? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's your first piece of paper. You're playing around. You're experimenting. Does it look like anything? No, yeah. it's lovely. Absolutely does not look like any <laughs> kind of thing whatsoever. It's quite lovely. Talkative. But it was great fun. All right? Now, I'm going to keep this because once it's dry, I can add color yeah. to it if I like. I take dry drawing tools, crayons, pastels, colored pencils and work on top of it. I can collage on top of it. There's all kinds of possibilities. But now I can also take a second piece of paper and I can create a composition on the second piece of paper. I know what I can do with these materials now. I can control more of what I want to do. Think about the process, the steps that I'm going to take to make my abstraction. Understood? All right. I'm going to put my stuff back so somebody can use it. I don't want to waste the paint. Have fun, everybody. Start experimenting. Now, when Elizabeth gets here, we're going to put the camera on her. Those of you who want to draw from life may, you could create absolutely beautiful figurative abstraction. You can draw in pencil first. Oh, I'm going to put it on the back counter. Oh, yeah. can I help? <laughs> um, from your sketches of Elizabeth. Understand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 With pastels and crayons, I would do that first and do the paint on top. So you cannot work with the pastels and crayons after you apply the paint. Unless you want to pay me for a whole new set of pastels, a box of crayons. Oh, what would you say? Do that first and then you can apply the paint. On top. So do the dry things first, wet things second. Does that make sense? That's the funny thing. Sorry. Right. So, 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 you have to take the top oh, off this. Yeah, so, I can't get the lower layer out. Okay. It comes out fast over here. Um, I don't know. I just saw Elizabeth text me on my phone. Yes. Oh, you want me to leave this here? Yes, so it's the camera. For the people at home. The camera. Okay. 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 Okay.
cardinal. Excellent. Now I'm debating whether or not to do a second one. I don't want to do that. I don't want to influence how you set up your composition. When you do the composition, think about what's going to be your focal point. In other words, where do you want your viewers to look first? But for now, just play. You start out with black or white? I started with white. Mr. Stengel started with black. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't Whatever really matter. Oh, but you have both <laughs> Both are in. Okay, don't get this wet one. Now remove it. You don't need it. No, I don't know at all because I didn't know what to do. Right. I didn't make it clear. Well, and I thought Elizabeth was coming. That's why I put the drawing equipment in. So, but you can paint on top of this. That's what I'm going to do. It's so beautiful. Don't wait. Art is so much. You doing? Everybody good? Having fun, I hope. Nothing in the chat box. No news is good news. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Show love. Everybody's got the same directions. Everybody's doing different stuff. This is very cool. Yeah. 
Now, the really hard thing with abstraction is knowing when to stop. <laughs> this is great. Keep going. You're, you're just started. Yeah, I love that. Like you say, when you look at the first thing you look at is the black. The most complicated is the Mr. Green. Yeah. Blind concert. Yes. Yes, right. That's to get your right brain in gear. Did I have a number that you shelved the water in my ear? Is that the right thing to do? And then inhale and still in the virus. And then you brush this in the other part. No, The real great thing about abstraction is if you do something and you don't like it, you can cover it up. No, I didn't. But the <laughs> Japanese artist, Yayo Tachuma, Tachama, uh, Tachama. Right. Right. The dogs. This is reminding me of her work. You're going to be famous. Everyone at home deeply working. Love it. So we have plenty of time, folks. If you want to do two or three experimental things before you start on the finished piece, remember Rudolf Stingle was all about process and experimentation. If there's more for you to learn and figure out, go for it. Don't limit yourself. Get some paper towel, crumple it up, use it as a, a tool. Steel wool would be interesting if you have some under your sink that you've been squirreling away to stop some little garden mouse from getting into your kitchen. Use it to paint with. Concept idea 
where do you want to look? And how are we going to get Show it to Lou Carbone, and he said it was great. Okay, guys. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt the creative process, but here are the things I want you to think about in your second piece. Think about the main concepts, the elements of art. Color, line, shape texture you're going to use all of those things in your composition so what is going to be the focal point where do you want your viewer to look first and how are you going to get them there are you going to use pattern and rhythm Repeated pattern? Are you going to use size, big and little? <laughs> Are you going to use symmetry or asymmetry? Is it about balance? Is it about dark and light? Maybe your focal point is going to be lighter and brighter than the rest of the picture or darker and with a bit of foreboding. Try and remember all those different terminologies that we've been using throughout our, our work together. Abstraction is tough. We, we think that the artist just goes into the studio and throws paint at the wall. No. There's a lot of conscious decision making that goes into creating an abstract composition, and you're probably all experiencing it now. The process, the thought process that you're going through is what this work is all about. And I prefer that you not draw first, but some folks have done that, that's fine. This is done from the second area as well. So where do you want people to look for this picture first? Want me to look interesting and different up here? 
since you make something big over in this corner, you can start and you can use some more glass in one corner than another. This is beautiful because it's You can always get more paint. Love this. Yeah, you're at a difficult stage. Sometimes just a little bit is enough. Yeah. Can you hold it up for me to look at from a distance, please? You might want a long black vertical piece. Okay. Um, I like this little touch of red that's probably a mistake. I like it. Thank you. All right, something to know about abstraction. Stop frequently, stand up, and look at the work from a distance. When you're up close to it, you get lost. Vanessa, did you hear me? Robin, you heard me? Look at your work from a distance on occasion. Liz, can I show you what I did with the uh, black and white and created in the abstract out of it? It's something. Okay, Robin, I can't hear you. I'm going to come closer to the laptop. One minute. I, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Understand? <laughs> All right, I, I'm coming closer. One minute, Robin. She's coming. Okay, thank you. So you didn't hear me. You didn't hear me at all. You're muted now. Uh, what, when you said to use black and white, I did that. And then I had some leaves that I picked up last night that were beautiful. So I put on this and it all just happened really fast. I, I don't know if you can see it. I love it. I want to spotlight you so I can see it better. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so surprised. I don't know where this came from. Let me see if there's another light here. But I'm kind of amazed. And I don't think, it doesn't feel like I did it. It just happened. Um, but I think it's interesting. I love it. And if I could get more color on, there's a little color in the uh, leaves. They're like a darker reddish. But it, it's so weird, Liz, because this isn't anything I plan. I don't. I know you have a different approach of planning, and I don't plan it. I just no, no. It. I said for the first one, just play. Oh, okay. Well, that's it. And I and I'm and I'm kind of happy that you had us do something like that because it felt really good. So now, when you put the leaves on, you just stuck them in the acrylic. I just crumbled them up and let them fall where they fell, and the the paint was thick enough in places, and I added some glue. So they could stay. Oh, okay, good. Then they'll stay. If you add yeah. it, they'll stay. Excellent. Yeah. No, we followed directions perfectly. Okay. And it looks great. Thank if you. If you have time to do a second one, think about planning. Okay, great. Thanks, Liz. And then you can compare which work better for you. We never lose the selective hearing. You know, that's what we do. <laughs> we hear what we want to hear. We 
Are you looking at this? I'm so worried. I can't find you. Okay, thank you. This is your sculpture. I think my 3D I don't know what I am. But I've done it. That's the phone on the screen. I don't know what that means. <laughs> now, conceptual painting. I'm not sure. 
I guess a conceptual pain <coughs> he has an idea and he will ask other people. <laughs> Depending on what the content is, but the visual aspects are important than the idea of I see my problem with conceptual art, which I love, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I still want one long black word. I don't know what to stick to that, but that's what I do. Just to create an asymmetry for yeah. interest. Yeah. Even if you at the edge of this black, then it should stay up. Yeah, it should go. But that's up to you. I love this. Sally, these are great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which one do you like better? It'd be kind of interesting to cut this out, put it on top. I don't think it would work. <laughs> Good morning. Yes, enough. Oh, really? I can have a pile. I have a pile of leftover bread. I have a pile of books, but 
I went to get the uh, right brain book. Oh, I forgot to bring it today. Sorry. That's okay. okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna um, take it from here. Oh, great. So okay. they didn't have it at the Symposium. Symposium. <laughs> oh, good. They have it here at the library. Good. But they have it here. So, so you can see it if you like it. You can buy it. It's not. That's even better. I looked at the library. Right. Good, and they, there's a, how many books? There's a textbook, and then she, this is not, she has a textbook, and she also has a workbook. You can literally draw in. So she'll have, on the left page, she'll have the direct right side, you do the art. She drew on my art. Oh my god. Well, what's her name? Number one rule for art teachers. Yeah, don't do never touch your students. Ever. Well, what's her name? Yeah. Never touch your students. Betty Edwards. She's more a scientist than Home artists, we're all okay. Pat, I didn't even know you were here today. Hi, you okay? Tell me it's not COVID, please. No, I'm okay. Don't worry. I just uh some back issue, but not COVID. Oh, all right. Take it easy. Thank you. Good to see your face. Me too. We missed you yesterday, for sure. Yes, me too. I wish to be there. Next week. Are you having fun? Uh, I baked it this. Okay. Oh, you're using foil. Oh, look at what Pat has made. Let's check this out. <laughs> You say junk, so I find whatever on my table. It's like a used it foil, and then I have this uh, fruit wrap, and then some string, and then poke a hole. Oops, what's it? <laughs> I like how you're starting to outline. Are you going to color more of it black, 
or just mm -hmm. yeah maybe i yeah i'd like to see some more black in the background too love mm -hmm. it talk <laughs> about texture very cool hold it still sally's trying to take a picture <laughs> <laughs> no, sally all right thank my you. monster crying out from the hulk <laughs> I see. Oh, I see the monster. Yeah. It's fun. Ah, Actually, it's great. styrofoam. I put styrofoam under the okay. foil. I burned it. <laughs> oh, be careful with that, please. It's fun. It's steam, but it's very fun. <laughs> Don't burn yourself. And you know, the gas from that is not good to breathe. Yeah, I put it under the van as a benefit okay, at good. home. Good. As long as you have ventilation, you're good. Yeah. Very cool. All right. <laughs> keep working on that. We want to see more. Okay. Anybody else at home who wants to share? Oh, Vanessa, somehow you got spotlighted. I didn't intend to do that. Vanessa, do you want to hold up what you're working on? Hey, Liz. I just, uh, I'm continuing to work on that piece from last week again. <laughs> but I started to do like the fire and the water on the outside. Ah. The now I'm starting to paint it gonna be exquisite thanks all right keep working sorry for disturbing no it's okay <laughs> goes with our monochromatic theme so far for sure <laughs> all right <laughs> sorry i'm a, i'm dog sitting guys i'm trying to mute myself <laughs> quite all right we love <laughs> Yeah. 
not to be personal, look at those more than the fact that we need to see and if that's not enough, I think it's a good point. If you leave the background white, it's going to suck up all of what you put on top of it, especially if the shapes are tiny and delicate. Yeah, I like what you
So everyone at home, I think I've seen all your work. Is there anyone I've missed? E, E, I know you came. Do you want to show? Usually you have not the ability to go on camera. But E, if you can do it today. Oh, and here Laura is walking around the room showing what people in class have done. So those of you at home, if you want to look up and see the variety of work we've done today, it's pretty amazing. Thanks, Laura. Good idea. It's always so extraordinary to me that same materials, same directions, and everybody does something different. Oh, you guys are getting a big clap and hearts from Pat. Oh, Pat, I have a question for you. I'm gonna do it privately in the chat. Whoops. How do I make it small? No, Pat, only you are gonna see this. Actually. Pat, did you see what I wrote to you? That's weird. Did I not send it? Oh, I didn't send it. All right, folks at home, look and see what people have created. My name is John. So proud of everybody today. It was you. Okay. This is by Heather. This is great. She painted directly on carpet. I should take a picture of that to show Ibu. May I, Heather? Oh, this is Mika's. This is Eileen's. Eileen is having a blast. Oh, you have a question, Vanessa? Let me look. Vanessa says, everyone's work is outstanding. So cool. Jennifer's work, we just saw Susan's and this is Jennifer's. A little bit of color in hers. I love how it's peeping through. Laura, this was a great idea. Thank you. Let's do it every class. 
I used to. I used to teach in the afternoon. Here, most of my adult life. Actually, yeah. Most of my entire life. Well, I grew up in I grew up in Marsland. We share everybody's work. Yeah, I was going to do that Um, I lived in Australia and then I ended up here. Wow. So, How long were you in Australia? Seven years. Wow. Folks at home, thank you so much for sharing. And we still have a few minutes. Actually, um, in house people, in house people, you literally have three minutes to clean up. We're going to start cleaning up early because this was such a messy project. And so sorry, Elizabeth could not make it today. Those of you at home, I don't know if you heard me earlier, but um, her alarm did not go off this morning and then her car did not start. So she is really upset, but we'll have her back, not to worry. These things happen. Thank you for the cupcake. Oh, yeah, I didn't have mine yet. Oh, no, in the top track. Helen, are you? Is Helen in the house? Helen, are you working from home? says the sound is low when you're talking. Now she's saying, now it sounds okay. I don't see her as a participant. It's weird. Maybe she's listening via phone. Liz, I don't know if you want to. I tried to do an abstract with a plan. Show, show us. And Everybody, look at the TV screen again. Folks at the back, look at the TV screen. Okay. I don't. I don't know what this is. I mean, I do know what I. It was uh, the idea was mountains, and then the white. Shush! Everybody, shush for a minute, please. So it, I don't shush. know what it is to anybody but this is what i tried to plan and then it then i got into white and gesso wow and I, couldn't, I couldn't stop so i don't know it just is a different thing you are creating beautiful stuff today wow i i was thinking of the the artist that you presented I mean, the, the piece that we that you know was more muted and with all the different colors that affected me that it uh, kind of monochronistic, but it had other colors in it. So anyway. Yeah, I see a bit of pink there. Yeah. Nice job. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing. I tried to follow directions, Liz. <laughs> it, it looks like Rudolph Stingle. You are following directions. You did great today. Thanks. And, and thanks everybody and all the work that you showed. It was great. Thank you. I hope everybody heard. Robin loved your work, everybody. Thank you, Robin. And oh, Laura already put in next week's featured artist is Christopher Wall. You're going to love his work.
folks at home continue working if you wish folks here you got to start gleaning right now donna sorry i know you got here a little late but you got to start cleaning baby Yeah, the the plates you have with paint on them, just throw them out. They are not useful for future work. The paper plates that you have paint on. In the pencil, uh, trying to keep them separate, they get really dirty if you put them in the pencil case. Not your job. I we got it covered. Well, thank you, Charles, for helping. Yeah, I like this though. Like this. Yeah, you're gonna have to carry it carefully. Try to warm that. And I leave to the left. I got this. You oh already got the table. Yeah. So you're going to have to wipe up most of it and then get some wet paper. No, I'm not going to have to lose. No, I'm not going Excuse me, lady. Donna, this is going to make it easier for you. Here's the garbage can right here. This Everybody has a different style of working. Do not worry. And don't worry about the catch one because I'll probably throw this out and get some more. Use them more time.
Nani, you gotta clean up first. We'll save you some. No cupcake for you. No soup for you. And yeah, folks at home, you still have time. See, people are still working. That's great. Some of you have left. That's cool, too. Vanessa, hold up your piece. Now, one thing about abstract is it, 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 if something happens to it, it changes. Beautiful. It <laughs> it's beautiful. And you're going to send me JPEGs, right? Yes. I will, definitely. I'm wondering with the water, because this is like water on the sides, I'm thinking I'm going to do it like um, the tan colors, and you know, because I'm not going to do any blues or anything like that. Uh-huh. Maybe just like kind of. You can always take another piece of paper and just play around, experiment with color mixing until you mm -hmm. find colors that you think are going to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Nice. All right. Thank you. You are always so focused. <laughs>
So I think we're going to say farewell. I will see you all next week. Thank you all for coming. And I love today's class. I'm incredibly proud of everyone. Ciao. All right on. Bye bye. Yep.